So I first noticed a problem with the way entrepreneurs approach traditional business back in 2018. Uh, I had just suffered two massive setbacks in my own life. The first was a nasty divorce, which I would not wish on anyone. And the second was the total destruction of a business I had spent a decade building. Now, I had done what all the experts told me to do. I, I had worked night and day. I'd grown revenue. I'd hired staff to help me scale. I'd expanded my operation. By all accounts, I was a huge success. I was making millions. I had the respect of my peers and probably a little envy from some people as well. I was 38 and cocky as hell, but under that facade was a burned out, overwhelmed, anxiety stricken business owner. See, I'd created a monster that had to be fed daily. At its peak, my business had to make $50,000 a month just to keep the lights on. Now, that's $600,000 a year before I made a single penny. And that 600, it didn't include marketing expenses or commissions to our sales team. I had built myself a prison and I hated it. And the experts told me that if I just hired right and built a great team that I could spend my days working on my business instead of in my business. You've heard that, right? Well, I did exactly that, except I didn't end up with a passive income business that ran itself. I had a machine that required my constant attention to ensure that it kept pumping out sales, sales I needed to pay my staff. Now, 10 years working 70 hours a week, my marriage suffered, my relationships with my kids suffered, and ultimately my health suffered. And in the end, a dispute with my business partner forced me to leave that company. Now, initially I was devastated. I had poured my life into that business. My entire identity was wrapped up in it and it was gone. The more I shared that story with people, the more I realized that it's not a unique story. If you ask most entrepreneurs why they started their business, they'll tell you that they either wanted more freedom over their life and their schedule, you can call that control, or they wanted the chance to do more meaningful work, so more fulfillment. Unfortunately, that's not what most entrepreneurs end up with. Instead, they build what's called, or what I call, a prison business. The owner is stuck in the business that they can't afford to leave, and instead of doing the real fulfilling and rewarding work that they want to do, they end up jumping from one emergency to the next, trying to keep the whole thing from crashing down around them. And some business coaches will tell you that all, all you got to do is hire better people. But see, that, that doesn't really work either. And if you need any evidence of that, I'll just point you to some comments that Elon Musk made in an interview not long ago. Um, he said, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, the problem with hiring really smart people is that all the easy problems get solved quickly, which means you as the business owner, well, you're left to solve all the really difficult problems that a lot of really smart people weren't able to fix. Now, the truth is most entrepreneurs don't want to run a hundred million dollar company or even a $10 million company. But everywhere you look, people will tell you that the key to winning at business is growth, growth at all cost. And if you tell somebody that you don't want to work hundred hours a week to keep the machine growing, well, then they're going to say that you don't have the commitment necessary to succeed in business. Well, I'm here to tell you they're wrong. And I'm not going to tell you that business is easy. It's hard, extremely hard. All that stuff that you hear about four hour work weeks and doing deals on vacation at the beach, that's, well, most of that's just flat out lies. But you don't have to become a slave to your business in order to change your situation. There is a better way. Now, entrepreneurial minimalism is a business philosophy that puts time freedom and income mobility ahead of growth. We believe your business should support and fund your dreams, your ambitions, and your lifestyle without consuming your life. We aren't building our businesses so that we can sell them at some distant future and we're not focused on vanity metrics like growth rate or making the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Our identities aren't wrapped up in what we do, but rather in the quality of life our work provides us. What we strive for as entrepreneurial minimalists is something I call maximum autonomy. And it's a concept that came to me when I was trying to understand what went so wrong with my first business. You see, I think all of us start out with the same dream. Maybe not all human beings, but certainly all entrepreneurs do. The dream of total freedom. Now, what is that? Well, total freedom is just the ability to do what you want, when you want, where you want, with whoever you want, for as long as you want, without having to consider the cost. But total freedom, nah, that's really a fantasy too. 
I don't care who you are or how rich you get, you still answer to somebody. Elon answers to the government and to the shareholders. The president answers to the voters, or at least he should. <laughs> you know, none of us are totally free. But answer me this question. If you could spend 100% of your time doing meaningful work with people you love and admire and were paid handsomely for it, would you say you were living a fulfilled life? See, I think that's the secret to a life well lived. Spending all of your time doing really meaningful work surrounded by great people and being paid well for what you do. And that is maximum autonomy. And that is what every entrepreneurial minimalist is striving for. Now with that said, and with that as our focus, that changes everything, doesn't it? It changes the business that we choose. It might change the structure of that business. It changes if or when we choose to hire. And most importantly, it changes what we measure and how we define success. You see, growth is only important if it increases your time freedom, your fulfillment, or your income mobility. Anything else is counterproductive.